Welcome to Heartcore, the podcast. Not going to lie to you guys, going to be super transparent. We've tried to do this six times already in the last two minutes. Welcome to the show. So stoked you're here. If you're watching, you saw a little cutesy thing from Miko. She sent some hearts your way. We thought that'd be cute. Heartcore and all. So, hey girl, how are you? I'm doing great. I hope that my tongue is going to start working a bit better from now on. <laughs> how are you doing? Doing well. All right, guys, we are hopping into more shadow work this week, taking a slightly deeper slash different dive into the topic that we started last week and probably will continue with for the next week as well. But there is so much you can do with shadow work. And today we are looking at the centers, each of the centers, both defined and undefined, where conditioning can make you who you are or unmake you from who you're supposed to be or have the potential of being. And I think that this, like what we talked about last week, I think was a great, like dip your toe into shadow work. But I think this is where a lot of the essence of shadow work comes in, especially if you're growing up with people who have defined centers around you and you happen to be a more open individual. Um, I think that this is a really interesting space to look at and to delve into for your own personal education journey, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. What are your thoughts on this? I thought I went really New York in that weird sentence. I'm so sorry. Thoughts. What are your thoughts on this Miko? <laughs> I like that accent actually. I don't know why. <laughs> oh my God. Well, it's, it's a bit like New York Italian. No, isn't that more? Yeah. I mean, it's not like it New York. actually New Yorkans? Uh, it's like not New York Latina. I feel like that's a whole different like subsect of phonetics. Oh, I love phonetics. We can do a whole episode on phonetics that has nothing to do with human design, but damn, I love accents. No, you're right. I think it is like New York. It's like Italian New York. Yeah. All right. Like on it. to you now. Always the, reminds the, me about of the shadows. Mafia movies. <laughs> <laughs> or just normal people living their lives in New York City. Come on. I guess. I guess. Not everyone has concrete shoes and is at the bottom of the Hudson. Or East River. East River slightly less classy. Cool. Now that we covered that. <laughs> I love working with centers and looking at centers, especially when it comes to connection charts. In general, I just love working with connection charts, but centers are a very simple and easy way for you to understand how you influence others and how they influence you. And it doesn't, you don't have to go into the channels and the planets, which planets are defining the, the gates in your chart, how you're connecting through dominance channels or conf uh, on, or companionship channels or anything like that. So that is next level. But this is a very, very simple way to understand, okay, this is how I influence people. This is the energy I'm picking up. This is my energy. And understanding that is so valuable. So for me, even when I don't know someone's design, this part gave me a lot of understanding in how to handle other people and how to accept other people as well. So even if I don't know someone's design, I can then be, oh, they probably have a defined route. That's why I'm feeling so much pressure inside of me. So it's it may not be accurate, but it's a bit like believing in God, in my opinion. When you believe in a God, I feel it makes life so much easier. And I'm saying God here, but you can call it spirit, universe, source, Allah, which, whichever you prefer. But I just feel like having this belief is making everything so much easier because you can always say, it's meant to be all the difficult things that are happening to you in your life. They're meant to be. And in my opinion, I do really feel that everything that is happening to me, even the bad, it always leads me to a better direction. I really, truly, deeply believe that. And yes, I also believe in a higher power. So for me, it's, it's a very helpful tool, even if it just gives me more peace of mind and human design with the centers does that for me as well it's just something that helps me accept myself in certain situations and also accept other people in certain situations or just also accept what I'm feeling inside how do you feel about it 
do literally the same thing. I think it's helped with like interpersonal relationships and understanding someone's strengths, understanding where communication wise they might not be as strong and seeing the potential for conflict, but then also knowing how to avoid conflict because you can, like when I see my parents, I visualize their charts in my head and I know that my mom has a hanging gate and my dad has the full channel and like that's where their conflict arises, right? So it's really interesting to be able to see that in my mind when it's happening and then having to explain that to them. Um, I think it's also really helpful in in work dynamics because I know I would say most of my staff's human design. So it's really cool to see what their strengths are and see that affect the team as well. And if they're not in a good space, knowing what I need to do as a supervisor, as a manager to help get people out of that space just by knowing their design. So yeah, I think that it is tremendous. I also, similarly to you, feel that it is a belief, right? It's something that kind of just brings a little bit more understanding around things. And I think everything in life we have to take with a grain of salt, whether it's religion, human design, who you're voting for in the presidency, I'm just going to pop that in there, <laughs> right? Like everything I feel like needs to be, yes, you have to form your opin- opinions about it, but like also do so with an open mind and see both sides of the coin. This is coming for someone with an undefined ajana. So also take that with what you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think <laughs> I agree. I agree with what you're saying. <laughs> On to it. Good point about the belief systems. I mean, in the end, yeah, I just, it, for me, there are just very, very few things that can be considered truth, if anything, because in the end, everything is a belief. Yes, and here we come. We start with a head center, which if you have it defined, it is a fixed mindset. You are more fixed in your thoughts. So it may be difficult to believe something that someone else is telling you if you have your own fixed opinion on it. So the only way that the head center can be defined is through the ajna. If the ajna is defined, the head is def- if the head is defined, the ajna is defined this way around. And that's why the combination of both then creates a very creates a very often very fixed mindset. There are more things that always play a role in your human design chart, but it can create a very fixed mindset. But we're not here to talk about the defined centers. If you would like to know more about the defined centers and even their undefined energy, we did record an episode on centers earlier this year, last year, I don't even, this year, I think. <laughs> this year (laughs) Celestina is pointing this year this year so yes if you want to check that out it's a very interesting episode it is going to help you a lot as well but today we are focusing on the undefined centers or more of the shadow aspects so the head center is usually about inspiration imagination and having questions but when it's in its shadow It is mental anxiety, confusion, and doubts. And whether it's defined or undefined, these things can still come up in your head. However, they're often more prominent when it's in an undefined head center that you can really be conditioned in a way from other people around you to either believe that you do have a fixed head center, like a a defined head center, or you're also potentially falling into the shadow aspects of it. So both defined and undefined can have a shadow aspect to them. So it's really interesting. So it's really important to ask yourself the question when it's undefined, especially, am I trying to answer everybody else's questions? Because this is what happens with an undefined head center. There are many, 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 many questions that you're receiving from the outside world you're getting inspired by others around you it's not an inspiration that comes from within you so this is a very key thing key question that you should be asking yourself when 
looking at your chart and especially when seeing an undefined center, am I trying to answer everybody else's questions? Would you like to add something to the head center? No, I think you did a great job. But as someone with a completely open head, I feel like the anxiety piece definitely comes into play. So just give that a noodle if you also have a completely open head. Yeah, and it's also it's a pressure center. So we have two pressure centers, the root and the head. And so there's a lot of pressure that can come from both areas up and down your human design. So yeah, just take it easy. <laughs> that would be my recommendation. If you're feeling a lot of mental pressure, mental anxiety, confusion and doubts, and this is also it depends on which gates are defined, if there are gates defined or if it's completely open, all of these things do play a role. But do some sa shadow work on the questions that we are going to provide to you for each of the centers. Let's move to the next one. The Ajna. I like to think of the Ajna as like the thought processing center. So, right, like you're taking in all of this information from your head and then essentially you have like a data processing center in your head to form opinions, to really think through things. And if, you've meet, if you meet someone with a defined Ajna, they probably have a well thought out process or a well thought out opinion on something. I feel like conversations with you are very like well thought out in that sense. Same with David, actually. Both of you guys have to find Ajna's. Love that for you. Takes me a hot minute to uh, mentally prepare my thoughts. See, there you go. One of those instances, nonetheless. So the shadow of the Ajna. So if you have it undefined, it can be challenging to conceptualize things, to have an awareness, to have actual answers to things and form opinions on things. Um, it may be challenging to process data, may be challenging to store memories, and it also may be challenging to like vocalize what you're experiencing as well, especially, especially if you don't have that connection to your throat, right? So the shadow of this is empty opinions or a fear of sharing your opinions and not knowing enough. And this can happen, I feel like mostly in conversation, right? It may not happen one-to-one -one if you're with someone who has a defined Ajna, but if you're in a group of people, I feel like this can probably present itself a bit more. And if you have kids in school, this can probably present itself a bit more as them not maybe having the confidence to raise their hand if they know the question, or maybe there's just like unsureness about it. So a little bit more of the shadow of this is feeling the need to figure things out and have them all figured out. And then the pressure to figure out what to do with one's life. I feel like we put so much pressure on younger kids in particular to figure out like what they want to do with life and to go to college at such a young age, right? Especially if your Ajna is undefined. Culturally, we're putting a ton of pressure on people to figure it out by the time they're 18, 22 max. Um, and that can be a lot if you have an undefined Ajna. So definitely think about that if you have kiddos with an undefined Ajna as well. Um, and then the pressure to, to do the next thing, to figure out what that next thing is. I feel like the other question that comes up culturally is, where do you see yourself in five years? Dude, I can never picture where I see myself in the next year just because of the style of my life, but also because I don't have a defined Ajna. So give that a noodle as well. Um, feelings of separation because you can't share your truth with others or feeling that that truth is going to be obstructed by something and then fear of sharing your opinions as a whole. So ways to kind of work through this as someone who's been conditioned potentially with an undefined Ajna is, am I trying to convince everyone that I am certain about something? And I think in a world that's so polarizing, especially right now, right? It's either this or that, black and white. Who do you agree with? Who do you disagree with? It can be challenging to kind of be in that gray space in the middle. But with an undefined Ajna, it's actually very okay to be in that gray space in the middle. So give yourself some grace around that. Learn what you need to learn to feel a little bit more educated. And then you can potentially form an opinion or you can see both sides of something. And that's an okay place to be as well. And I think that that's really important. You don't have to see things in black and white. All great points. And it's always nice to hear from someone that's does have the center open or undefined 
as a personal experience as well. And what I hear a lot from individuals that have an open or undefined ajna, it means that they also have an open or undefined head. So a lot of times they feel like they're not very good in school. I know for you it was different, I, I believe. <laughs> But a lot of times for individuals that do have that open or undefined, they are struggling a lot because the school system is very rigid and it's set out to be in a certain way. They're expecting specific answers. There's not a lot of flexibility. The teachers have their own opinions and, and of course the school system as well. So for a very open-minded individual, it can be quite challenging also for an undefined or open Ajna to have this structured approach, especially for a quad right. It can be very complicated and tough with an undefined head and Ajna or open head and Ajna to stick to this rigid structure. And they often feel like they're not good enough. They're not good enough in school. They can't remember things the way that they're supposed to. This, this whole learning things by heart is very challenging for them a lot of times and keeping that memory alive for the whole school journey. It can be very, very challenging. So don't beat yourself up about this and really Be a bit easier on yourself. Your mind doesn't work the same way. I love to give the example of a library card. So if you have this constellation where both your head and Ajna are open or undefined, then think about having, think about having a library, but you don't have the access card. Everyone else around you has access to your library. If they ask the right questions, if they're taking if they're bringing out the answer from you if you're if they're requesting to have insights to your library if they're requesting to to know your wisdom but you yourself out of the blue will have difficulties to access your library it needs to be prompted and it needs to be requested by others others need to be able to see and and feel that you have something to share and then ask of you to share it Dude, you just literally unlocked my life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's how it works with undefined ajnas and heads. Whereas the defined ajna and or head, they do have their own library access card, basically. So the next center we're going to be talking about is the throat center. And I'm going to let the manifester <laughs> take over that part. <laughs> You okay, both have I'm a defined throat. <laughs> you go. I was just saying me, 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 me. As in not like <laughs> me, as in like I was clearing my throat. Continue, please, Miko. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make it short. So the throat center. So for me, I do like to be prepared. I do like to... I mean, there are different things in my chart that are sh showing this as well, but I do like to have a structure. I do like to know what I'm going to be talking about. I'm not really very good at just saying things from the heart, whereas Celestina literally does that. Her connection is from the heart to the throat. She's a manifester, so she can speak more in the spur of the moment if her heart is in it. If her heart is not in it, it's also not going to have the same impact. But for me, I really like to think through it, use my ajna, have a structure, which happened again today, as you can see. <laughs> And then I like to share about it. So it also comes from the storytelling um, 1156 channel. So I really like to have a clear storyline and then I can share. The undefined throat is, it can pick up voices from others around them. So it can speak for others around them. But in the shadow aspect, it can turn out to be a need for attention. So they may be the people that are going to be talking without a filter. They're just going to talk, talk, talk. They don't know when to stop. They're trying to really gain the attention from everyone else. They're putting themselves in the center to, to feel heard. And that is doing the opposite. They're going to feel even worse because people are not listening to them. 
if they are in their shadow. This doesn't mean that when you have an undefined throat, that when you speak, it's not valid, but you need to wait for the invitation more with an undefined throat. It's better because people are going to value what you're, you have to say. And me, even as a defined throat, because I'm a projector and because my channel that I'm using is a projected channel, I wait for invitation to speak. And that is when I really feel like people are listening to what I have to say. So as the question, ask yourself, am I trying to attract attention or am I speaking because it's it's truly something that I feel is going to benefit someone? Have I been invited to speak? Um, it again depends on the rest of your chart. But if you have an undefined throat, I would recommend trying this out. It's going to make a big difference. I can't relate. I, I just spur the moment talk. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but only when your heart is in it, because I've seen you silent. Too true. Yeah. Yesterday, I did not want to talk to anybody. And I was in a sleepy bubble, and it was great. And then also, remember that one time, it was maybe like three or four months ago, where... I was speaking, but it didn't sound like me or feel like me. How weird was that, dude? The voice message. Yeah, that was very <laughs> weird. It was so We have weird. that recording. So Ugh. if you want to go back to that, I think it was actually, was it in the centers? I'm not sure. I don't remember. We, we added the recording. <laughs> oh, it was so weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what planet was doing something to your throat that day, but... It was not okay. Anyway. So that means we're moving on to the next center if you don't want to talk about the undefined throat, right? Or do you want to say something? No, I'm good. I think you did a great okay. job as a defined throat person. Perfect. <laughs> something I don't have. Amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We are going down from the throat into the G center, and I'm actually very happy that you structured it this way, Miko. So think of the G center as like the love, identity, direction center, spirituality center, leadership center, all of that deliciousness, if you will. However, in the shadow, it could feel, so again, if you don't have this defined, it can feel maybe like you're a little bit lost, maybe like you're a little bit disoriented. The way it presents for me is we move a lot and I feel like my style, my external style changes wherever we go. And I think I've said this in multiple episodes before, but like Miko can wear a turtleneck and jeans and black and like some type of boot in whatever environment she's in, whether it's like, I don't know, 25 degrees Celsius or like negative two degrees Celsius, right? Can literally wear the same uniform regardless of where she is. Even in uh, Saudi. <laughs> Even when you were in Saudi, I feel like that was your vibe. So the a person with a defined G center is going to have, they're, they're, they know themselves, right? And when you don't have a defined G center, it can be very challenging to know who you are in every instance, right? That could feel like others coming into your world, dropping off a little bit of piece of them, and then you absorbing that and you becoming a little bit of someone else. I may have mentioned this on here before too, but my laugh in high school changed with my high school boyfriend, which was super weird. And then like we broke up and then my laugh like went back to normal. Yeah, super weird. So those are some things that I think just being aware of is really important. So doing doing a little bit more of a deep dive in this. It could be the pressure to figure out who you are. And I feel like those were a couple of examples. Um, so really dive into your past or maybe even your present right now to see if anything in your world has changed based off of your environment or the people that you're around. Again, looking for that direction outside of yourself. Again, it can be multifactorial. Potentially feeling unlovable or unseen pressure to seek answers um, that are ex that are outside of your authority, right? So come back into who you are at the core, at the root, look at your type, look at your authority, follow that strategy, follow that authority, and then run it through to determine if that is the right answer for you. And then potentially even seeking your identity in relationships through others. That the example of my laugh changing. Again, weirdest thing. 
So the question to ask yourself with an undefined G-Center, and you're trying to do the shadow work is, am I looking for love and or direction? And again, search your environment, search the people that you're around. And I feel like that'll help give you some really good insights. So I wrote down, am I looking for love and or direction? And I was about to write obsessively looking for love and or direction, but I think that is actually still the right way to say it because when you are an undefined G-Center, I've seen so many undefined G-Centers that are constantly, consistently, all the time searching for answers outside of themselves. They are the ones that are often going to psychics, to astrologers, to everything that they can find. They keep learning. They keep trying to figure out which direction to go into. It's not what you have to do. This is you trying to find external direction and orientation. What you should be doing is really listening to your inner authority. That's the first thing. Or actually the second thing. The first thing is to follow your strategy. <laughs> the next thing is listening to your inner authority. But most importantly for an undefined G-Center is your environment. Really be in the right location. Be in the place that makes you feel good. That makes you feel if you're a generator, satisfied, if you are a projector, successful, if you are a manifester, at peace, if you are a reflector, inspired, if you are a manifesting generator, at peace and satisfied. So really figure out the place that will make you feel this way. Surround yourself with the right people and the direction will come. For this, I always like to share the image of being on a boat, but not having the paddles to row with and the river that you're on is just going to take you down a path. You just have to choose the right river. So AKA the right environment to be in or to be on which, whichever river you choose to be on and letting it take you down its stream and you're going to end up in the right direction. So release the pressure of trying to continuously figure out in the external world, receiving or gaining answers from other people. It is great. Yes, human design is interesting. Astrology is interesting. Mediums, psychics, all that jazz is interesting. But still, when you're going to these things, don't overdo it. Stay, stay more connected to your inner work than focusing on these external compasses, I would say. <laughs> The next center we're going to be talking about is the heart core <laughs> ego or heart. <laughs> it's not doing it. There we go. The hearts. For everyone that wasn't watching, I did the thing again with the hearts on the MacBook. <laughs> so the ego center is, well, we have it defined, so it's difficult for us to talk for the undefined or entirely open egos, but we have witnessed them. And we've also witnessed them in our presence, which makes a big difference. So with the ego, when you're living in your shadow, you are trying to people please, but you're also trying to you're trying too hard, basically. You're really trying to prove yourself and you're trying to be the best person in whatever it is that, that you are trying to be the best person in. So it is a very, very challenging center to, to decondition because everyone is so, so, so deeply conditioned in this ego center, especially in our day and age. But I feel like this was really something that has always been a heavy conditioning throughout history of humanity. And it's also, Ra had held a lecture on this and he was saying that this is one of the hardest things to explain to an undefined or open ego, to tell them, hey, don't try to push yourself so hard. Don't, you don't have to prove yourself. You can just relax theoretically <laughs> and you can just let life um, just go with the flow. 
but it's it, it's virtually impossible to tell someone with an undefined or open ego to to work like that to function like that in life whereas the defined ego actually does have something to prove but they need to figure out what they need to prove and it is not approving to others it is approving to yourself everything that we're doing here is an experiment that first of all it is an experiment <laughs> so you have to as Celestina said at the beginning, take it with a grain of salt and experiment with it. Try it out for yourself. See what feels right, what doesn't feel right. But an undefined or open ego is heavily conditioned to, when I speak about it this way, there is a resistance in you to say, no, I need to prove myself. I have to do this. I have to do that. You where in fact you don't have to use your willpower to get anything done. This would be detrimental for you. It would challenge your health. If you would use that center as AKA the willpower, because this is all about willpower, to get things done. If you have any of the other motor centers defined, use those, use those energy centers to get things done. Don't use your willpower to get things done. So the question you should ask yourself is, do I have something to prove? And if you have a whole list of things that you want to prove and you have an undefined or open center, try to figure out a way to release those. That's, that's all I have for the ego. Would you like to Did add it? something to that? Yeah, I think we might have to have my husband on because homeboy is like the least people pleasy person on the face of the earth. And he has a completely undefined like a completely open ego. I give him all my heart. You're welcome, babes. But yeah, like, I, <laughs> I don't know. True. I don't know how he did it or how he does it. The least people pleasy person on the face of the planet. Amazing. Yeah, it's, so. it's true. I met him. <laughs> now I can say I've met him. <laughs> he literally Even doesn't though he give... Did give me, he did give me his jacket. Okay, but that's so that you didn't die from yeah, it's the cold <laughs> it wasn't even that cold <laughs> anyway yeah i i think that it's very interesting being a small percentage of people who do have a defined ego who do have to run on willpower um that's why we're recording at 11 p.m my time you know it's just and that's why you made this beautiful slide deck because we both committed so hard to this so it's it's very interesting to me that like we do this because we love what we do and we care we're committed to to doing this together you know so it's very interesting to me to do this from a people pleasy people pleasy place because this is not a people pleasy place perspective <laughs> that we're coming <laughs> at this true. with <laughs> very true what a whole vibe right now. All right, guys, on to the spleen. <laughs> so good. All right. So this is, uh, do, how am I getting all of the ones that I have completely open? You know, I'm not mad about it. This is actually working out well. So guys, we are talking about the spleen. This is typically linked with like a fear center. It could also be intuition, intuition for self, intuition for others. Um, spontaneity, one's health, the values that you have, and ultimately like survival intelligence. And I think it's super cool for people who have this as their inner authority. It's just a very, the intuition piece of it and the survival piece of it, I think is just very cool. But in the shadow aspect of it, when you do not have this defined, it can lead to extreme codependency, especially if you are with another human who does have a spleen defined that is it could be a toxic relationship if it's not if you haven't entered the relationship properly and we, i'm pretty pretty sure we've discussed this in several relationship episodes before but codependency can be something that you struggle with if you have an undefined spleen so this could also mean shying away from pursuing things that that you want to do but out of insecurity like insecurity of being able to complete that the fear of failure. There's a lot of fear in this, in this um, center as well. The fear of failure, fear of criticism, fear of losing people. Um, if you live in your truth and then the fear of negative consequences for your actions, it can be really heavy 
And I think anxiety can stem from this as well. It can be a result of maybe not and maybe not in the same way that the open head can lead to anxiety, but there can definitely be a lot of anxiety coming from this as well, especially with unresolved fears or unresolved communication of fears. You know what? Get a therapist. That's what I'm telling you. Get a therapist. <laughs> so the question that you can ask yourself is, am I holding on to things that aren't good for me? And that can be a very loaded question, especially if it's a relationship that you need to break off or an environment that you get in that you need to get out of or some type of toxicity in your life that you just need to break away from that could also be like drugs alcohol right like that kind of codependency as well it's not just with another human so yeah this can be really heavy to break from and i think this is a good time to mention that shadow work is not easy and that you may recognize throughout this episode that you have a significant amount of work to do and it could feel really overwhelming and maybe you stop it right now because the fear of going through all of this is really overwhelming and i think the really good reminder is to start with your strategy start with your authority and then over time start to dive into some of these more challenging spaces where you have been conditioned over time and maybe you will need a professional maybe it's Maybe you're working with someone like Miko who can help you through and help you understand your human design, but also maybe you need a therapist, like real talk, like maybe you need a therapist to like unpack some of these big things, especially if it's bringing up something momentous that happened in your life, could be positive, could be negative, consider that. So yeah, the spleen is kind of heavy, kind of intense, but also something very worthwhile working through. I think you covered a lot of the aspects for the spleen that are very important. Um, it is the center of survival. So if you were someone in your childhood that was struggling with feeling safe in their home, feeling secure with financial means as well, so it doesn't have to just be about an, an abusive childhood, but it is also about being safe in where you live? Did you have to continuously move homes? Or did your parents not have enough money to keep your home, your, your head underneath a roof? Or there are many things that can cause very challenging um, deconditioning processes for the spleen. So Chalicina is absolutely right that if it is very difficult, anything that has to do with the root center, I would say, is also all about safety and security. And it's basically all your basic needs. So check the Maslow's Pyramid, check your root center, and um, check if you had your basic needs covered, if you feel like you're very anxious when it comes to financial aspects or safety and security regarding your basic needs then um, it may be better if it's very severe to talk to a licensed therapist because a lot can be latched, like the, the spleen can latch on to a lot. And it's also, it needs to be de-energized a lot of times. So ask yourself the question, am I holding on to things that aren't good for me, but also spend a lot of time in nature if you can and let nature de-energize you because the if it's undefined or open you're taking on the energies of others and uh, it's it's just important to cleanse that so yeah the sacral center we both know what that feels like to have it undefined <laughs> So the sacral center is about the life force energy. It's about um, having this gut feeling. It's about sexuality. And uh, it's, it's this, yeah, you can go from morning till evening with that energy, but you need to feel satisfied to do so if it's defined. So we talked about it last time as well that Celestina has a generator husband and he hasn't felt this sick since they've known each other and that is a very long time they've known each other for a very long time so he hasn't been sick 
like this for a very long time, which is also very interesting from a generator perspective, a generator that is not following his satisfaction because of life. It's it's impossible to do that in the military. There's not much of a choice when someone gives you a task, you have to fulfill it. You can't just be like, no. So it is, it's a very difficult balance to uphold. However, when it's undefined, it's often related to not knowing when to stop. You don't know when enough is enough. And that is also the question you should be asking yourself. Do I know when enough is enough? So really hone in on that. And that is different to the spleen. The spleen is about, is it healthy for me? And this is about knowing when enough is enough. So setting boundaries, really figuring out what should I continue doing? What shouldn't I continue doing? Who should I continue doing or doing it with? <laughs> Whichever you choose to go with. Um, so yeah, really, really figure out where to set the boundaries and break your life down into smaller parts because otherwise it's very overwhelming for the spleen or for for any shadow work to just say, ask yourself these questions in a wide range but break it down say okay work wise personal life romantic partners family friends like break it down into smaller parts and figure out when enough is enough in these areas, figure out what is good for me, what is not good for me, and, and do that for the other centers as well. Dude, this took me so long, and I, I feel like it's still a thing in my life, right? I can tell you that it, 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 it probably took the longest, and I'm, it's still not perfect, right? But like, it took the longest for me to understand that the sacral energy is not my energy. It took me forever to understand what is my energy and was it, what isn't my energy. Having grown up with two manifesting generators who are like freaking energizer bunnies, even now in their late sixties, and then probably been surrounded by a many a many generator in my life. Also, I feel like societally we're just told to be generators and do 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 go go go, right? It took me a really long time to understand that I don't have to have a packed schedule. I don't have to be doing something every minute. And while I don't like the way I feel after I wake up from a nap, if I fall asleep in the middle of an afternoon when I have nothing to do, it's okay. But it took a lot to get there. And it's still an ongoing process because the other day I had off and I really wanted to go to the mall and I was like, let's go, 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 do, do, do. Dude, I didn't get off the couch. Actually, that's a lie. I made myself cupcakes and then I napped. It was a great day but I didn't go to the mall. So it's a learning process, right? Yeah. To all the non-sacral beings out there, you don't have to be Gary V and go, 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 do, do, do all of it. Like you don't have to have the hustle culture life. It's okay. But also for generators and manifesting generators, I just want to mention that. <laughs> Thank you. You yeah. also don't have to be go, go, go all the time. You do need breaks and yeah. that's often forgotten. It's just, yeah. Otherwise you will burn down, burn out. Especially if you're doing things that don't light your, that don't light your fire, fill your cup, whatever metaphor 1, you want to use. 1000 percent. Yeah, absolutely. The emotional solar plexus. Ooh, that was a tough one for me. So an undefined or open, well, first the emotional solar plexus is about feelings emotional solar plexus it's about emotional awareness um, and it's a sensitive center so when it's defined you can have you have waves up and downs some are more pronounced others are less pronounced there are individuals whose waves are more mellow other individuals go spike up and spike down especially my individual wave emotional solar plexus individuals they have those really high highs and low lows with melancholy mixed into the mix but you can also have a combination so if you have several centers going flowing to or flowing out of the emotional solar plexus 
it can be a wild ride. The undefined emotional solar plexus is someone who's going to take on the emotions of others. And with every single center that is undefined or open, you take in the energy and you amplify it. It depends which type you are. When you're a reflector, you have a less penetrable aura. When you're a manifester, you also have a less penetrable aura, but it still affects you. Reflectors have the most dense aura. They're the most protected, even though they are the o most open individuals. Everyone else is very susceptible. Manifestors are just slightly less affected, affectable. But it also, again, I personally believe that it does depend on whether the channel is fully defined consciously or unconsciously, or whether you are a reflector in both unconscious and conscious aspects. So I do feel, yeah, Celestina is one of those. <laughs> so I do feel like when you're a reflector in your unconscious and your conscious, it does have a different kind of impact, my opinion. So the undefined emotional solar plexus, when it's when when you're around someone that has a defined emotional solar plexus or when you're defining it with someone else, you can amplify these emotions. So if you have a defined emotional solar plexus in front of you, sitting in front of you, or let's say it more correctly, if you have an individual with a defined emotional solar plexus sitting in front of you <laughs> and they are sad, then you may be the one that's going to start crying. So that's just one example. It can go in many different emotional ways. It can also go into the positive direction, but it's just very susceptible to other people's emotions. And the best thing you can do is step away from the situation. It's really separating yourself physically, get out of the room, get out of the house, get out of the apartment, take a walk in the park or even just on the streets, just get away and come back to de-escalate the situation. The fear of confrontation is a very big one. And I had this when I was a teenager, especially, or growing up, I felt like I didn't want to get into confrontations because every time I felt like I was sharing my emotions or I was sharing what I was feeling or thinking, and I knew it would hurt the other person or even actions that I did, and I knew it would hurt the other person, I didn't want to do it. And I'm someone whose who's value system, one of my top three values is honesty. And to not be able to share my truth with someone is something that is very, very difficult for me. Now I've managed to figure that out. I'm not someone that keeps it to myself anymore. I share it even though it may hurt the other person, but I've also developed better communication skills. So all of that um, with an undefined or open emotional solar plexus can be very challenging. You start to swallow a lot of things. You don't want to share things that will hurt the other person because the moment that the other person gets hurt, you take it in and you feel it even more than the other person. It, yeah, Celestina is showing an explosion it really feels horrible. So hurting someone and you know that it's going to affect them, it's so much worse for the person doing it if they have an undefined or open emotional solar plexus. But there are many things that you can do to work on that and you really need to work on that because life is not going to get better. It's not going to get easier if you keep everything to yourself. It is actually going to get worse because you can't be, you can't truly be yourself. And that's what we want to be. We want every single one of us really deep down, some of us deep down, deep, deep, deep down, others less deep down, <laughs> but we all want to be ourselves. We just want to yeah, be who we are without shame, without guilt, without anything like that. So work on the question, am I avoiding confrontation and truth? Would you like to share something about this? I think you did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Again, growing it. <laughs> up with two emotional manifesting generators 
as a non-emotional being is heavy. But I didn't know that as a kid, right? So this this harks back to what we said in the beginning. Knowing this, and again, not necessarily taking it like faith, taking it like religion, but just knowing this can give you such great insights into those personal relationship dynamics that may have been challenging or that may still be challenging, but could be eased significantly by having an understanding of people, having an understanding of yourself. And in my case, I amplify other people's emotions. So if my parents are on one or if there are some wild and crazy cycles happening in the universe, <laughs> I know to step back significantly and physically get out of the space it helps a lot so yeah i think i think you did a fantastic job nico thank you i appreciate it well now we move to the root center which we also have undefined da, 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 roots, da, 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 da. that's a song right i'm pretty sure i actually don't know yeah. the words but it sounds like a song no. <laughs> <laughs> i've got no roots on the ground I and my no home roots on the on my home why would you no. have roots on your home <laughs> i've got no roots and my home was never on the ground i'm one of those people that just makes up words to songs and then just sings along you know like i'm blue and abu di abu da i know it's i'm blue and i believe i will die but it's like one of those you know oh uh, is it if uh, for me it sounds i'm blue and if i were green i would die <laughs> oh it's not, it's not, it's not. I just invented Interesting. that. But I love to know the accurate words of an of the lyrics of a song. Yeah, or like Benny and the Jets. That's another one. She's got electric boobs on her shoes, but that's also not the words. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. On to the root cool. center, guys. That was a fun little detour. <laughs> oh my God. So as we started with the head, a pressure center, we are finishing with another massive pressure center the root if you look at if you're looking at this visually it'll make sense to where you may feel root pressure i know for me my anxiety i feel it in my root at all times and it's usually like a lower back like pelvic kind of feeling where i where it physically manifests for me so that may that may be the case for you as well if you've never experienced this before or if you have and you're like what that's where you're probably feeling it. So the root center, especially if undefined, can can be can create stress, but it can also be a catalyst for momentum, for progress, and kind of an adrenaline push. However, knowing what is your energy and what isn't your energy is so important when it comes to the root center. So the shadow work is the shadow side of this center is overworking to finish doing too many things doing all of the things but also feeling the external external pressure to do all of the things and again noting what is your energy and what isn't your energy can be very very important so how this can manifest is insecurity about your purpose and that could be your purpose in a project your purpose in a team dynamic, your purpose in life, your purpose in a relationship, right? It can be multifactorial. So really noting that. The pressure to achieve. This is where kids who are high achievers, maybe inherently, may feel that. And it may come externally um, if they don't have their own defined root, right? If they're coming at it with an undefined root, this could be parents teachers, society, putting pressure on them to achieve and achieve higher and do more. Um, the pressure to do things and finish things quickly, feeling like you need to be needed, and then pressure to find your passions. Again, I feel like society, we put so much pressure on young adults to do, not just to learn and do, but to like figure out what their life path is, right? But for someone with an undefined route, that is actually going to be extremely detrimental because then they're not going to necessarily have the wherewithal to follow their strategy and authority. They may just be feeling external pressure to do the things and to achieve. The question with this is, am I in a hurry to get things done so that I can be free of the pressure? I can tell you that from having an undefined route, the biggest thing that I feel 
is, especially in my work setting, is if there is, it's not even with coworkers, is if there is a guest in the restaurant who just has like heightened, it's not even emotions, but just has like a heightened sense of energy about them, then I get, then I feel this like root sacral, uh, it's just in my lower body, this like really intense, like, uh, how do I explain this? Squeeze your butt cheeks together, kind of like ugh, energy. That's what, that's what an undefined root feels like when you are feeling a lot of external pressure. And oftentimes it comes from guests in the restaurant who have, I don't know, external qualms that they're bringing into my very sacred space when all they should be doing is eating delicious pizza. Anyway, that's kind of where I feel it. Where do you feel it? Because yours is also undefined. Yeah, I think that is a great explanation of what we feel, pinching our butt cheeks together. And it's like this, yeah, it's like a pressure cooker. It really feels like a pressure cooker or a, a teapot, those old teapots where at some point it just goes, Dee! <laughs> that's that's what I feel. And it's it's a buildup and I can feel it so well when my brother is around and he's super stressed because he's got two channels, the individual channel and the tribal channel which are going towards his spleen and when he is under stress, which he's putting himself under, but when he has a lot of stress on his shoulders or his root, I can feel it. And it's so, it's, it's very, very difficult to handle it for me. I need to, I actually physically need to leave because I, I can't handle it. And what is said in human design is that this is probably not correct to say, but in human design, it is said that individuals with an undefined or open root are the best slaves because you can put one thing onto their desk and then they will try to finish it and complete it as fast as they can so they can get rid of that pressure. And especially if you tell them it has to be done in like ASAP in whatever amount of time. So then they will try to get it done as soon as they can or as fast as they can. Not necessarily always as soon as they can, but as fast as they can. And then what happens is that if this is your boss who's piling on things onto your desk, it's going to get more and more and more and more and more because you are going to work, 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 work. So it's a bit similar to the not knowing when enough is enough. And if you have an undefined or open sacral and an undefined or open root, it can be very challenging to stop yourself from going overboard and working way too hard, way too much. So yeah. Also, actually, I would find this interesting to do an episode on self-employment versus employed. Because I feel like there are certain design types in your authorities, uh, yeah, definitions in your human design chart that can support you more when you are self-employed or working at a company and who are less helpful. So even when it comes to channels, for example. So, yeah. Just I can tell you thought. that I felt way less stressed out working for myself, but so much more satisfied working with a team. Very interesting. And that makes so much sense with your design. <laughs> yeah. As in being, being, but you're still in a leadership position. Yes. So yes. I feel, I feel like you being the leader and being self-employed leader of a team and being self-employed, that would also be ideal for you because then you don't have anyone that you need to satisfy on top of you. Do you have some startup capital for me? <laughs> no anyone anyone listening <laughs> you heard Celestina <laughs> she would be amazing at this I would I can form oh dude that's what I should do I should consult and create teams yep <sighs> no that's true I totally agree and that have your own like team. my dream job yeah <laughs> have my own team and then oh, yes okay new dream job cool I quit guys <laughs> Figure out your own pizzas. I'm kidding. I actually <laughs> don't. 
I have student loans to pay, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, for today, I feel like we've done a great job. Thank you so much for staying up so late. Honestly, I can go clean the house right now. That's how energized I am. Not good. Ooh, me. But I'm excited <laughs> that we did this. Me too. And yesterday, <laughs> I totally get what you're saying because... I have a little projector niece, which has a very similar, in a lot of ways, she's similar to my brother in her design. And so before taking her to sleep, I was just singing to her. And then I decided, okay, I really want to want to hear the song that I was singing, which was Fly Me to the Moon. Oh my God, Frank, how cute. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> I love that. And and then I was putting it on and then she loves to dance and she loves to jump and she loves to hear music. So when I was doing that, I was tr changing her diapers and then she started to get more and more energized. And then I was at, when she was supposed to go to sleep, I was like, okay, here you go to my brother. <laughs> Good luck. And a projector, you shouldn't do that with a projector. A projector needs their time to wind down, but it just happened. I'm sorry. Way to go. <laughs> And then I tried to counteract it by putting on slow Disney music, but... Too late. Yeah. Too late. Too late. <laughs> Dude, try like tickling... Oh, my nonna would do this for me. My projector nonna would do this for me. She would tickle my face with a tissue and I would fall asleep. It was magical. I do it like this. I do that to my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that too. <laughs> okay, well. Wow. Thank you we everyone went off the rails. for listening. Yeah. So if you're a projector, give yourself time to wind down. If you're a manifester, give yourself time to wind down. Oh, yeah. And do your best not to sleep next to a sacral being. Also, also a good point. Always a good point. <laughs> yeah. Coming from someone who's married to a sacral being. <laughs> hey, yo. It's okay. Hey, uh, earplugs really work and like a weighted blanket. The combination of the two. Magical. Highly recommend. Nice. All right, guys. Toodles. Bye. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Ready. <sighs> Welcome <laughs> to the heart school. <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you want to start the episode like this today? <laughs> yes, I think we should. And it's 11-11 coming up right now. So, yes. Welcome to the Hardcore Opportunity. <laughs> God damn it, Miko. I was mixing the introductions. Where did Welcome you think you were going? Welcome to the Opportunity going? Meditation Spa. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to hold the meditation. God damn it. Maybe we need one to start out. <laughs> and it was no, perfect. No, cool, you cool. started it at 11.11. It was actually perfect. Okay. Take three. Welcome to the hardcore med. Oh my god, what is going on today? <laughs> Your face broken, dude. <laughs> my tongue is broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you do it. No, you don't have it set up. Okay, I can't. I <laughs> okay, I do the hearts, and you say the intro. Okay. <laughs> 